Karate Fam, this guy's little train 1090. So I'm going to you today for a brand new review. And today we're going to be talking about another, actually a very, very rare model kit today. One of the rarest model kits out there, one of the most impressive model kits out there. Of course, brought to us by the wonderful duo of Bully Bing and Steve Jolie, the 1974 Imposter Godzilla. <laughs> when I tell y'all, this has been a growth piece for me ever since I saw Leslie Chambers' video, I think three years ago, four years ago. This has been a very, very non-active search, but if, it ever, if I ever had the opportunity to get my hands on it, I was definitely going to seize it. And today, we're here to talk about that. Because, uh, oh my God, this thing is absolutely incredible perfection is not a good uh, it's not a well enough word for this to me this i'm going to say it down this figure is flawless to me i see absolutely no flaws with this figure of course when i come uh go up close and personal with it to be able to show you all the deep all the little details in it you'll see exactly what i mean when i say that but before i do that i do want to give a uh a big thank you to john legrand so John Legrand, he's a he's he's a model kit builder himself, and John Legrand actually built and painted this himself, after after he bought it from Burley from Burley and Steve and Steve. So this is hit. So I also gotta give him big thanks for him too because he did a phenomenal job making this thing look perfect, absolutely incredible. So I guess we're going to get into it. I mean, you already know my thoughts on Godzilla versus Mega Godzilla. It's literally tied for fifth place between that and Terra Mega Godzilla. I like Terra Godzilla, Mega Godzilla a smidget more, but you gotta love Godzilla versus Mega Godzilla, of course. And of course, who doesn't who doesn't love the Imposter Godzilla? I mean, some people maybe think the design's a little wonky, but I don't care because honestly, I really do love the way this this suit looks. Just like how a lot of people don't care for the Cyborg eighty four suit, I'm fine with that too, honestly. But something about the Impulse Casa just looks incredible. And I can't wait much longer to go ahead and talk about this. So let me go ahead and pull the camera up closer so I can give you an up close and personal look at the Impulse Godzilla from Burley Bang and Steve Sergioli and built and painted by John Legrand. Thank you. And here he is the Imposter Godzilla himself. Oh my Atlanta. Whoo, this boy is nasty. Oh my goodness. I love I just love it. Just absolutely love it. I'm not gonna lie though. I do my very best, but photos, pictures does not do this thing, Mad Man justice. This thing is incredible. Now, something I do really like that John Legrand did was with the eyes, he didn't just give this give him like this regular eyes. Like you can just kind of see the veins popping from his eyes. So I really, really did like that that John LeGrand took the time to go ahead and do that for him. Of course, the, um, the mouth is painted pink with the exaggerated uh, teeth as well as the exaggerated jawbone. And one thing that I really do like that um, that Burley Vane did, that he, that he told me himself personally was, this guy's beefy. He's a beefy boy. And the reason why he did that was because he wanted to make it look like God, that Mega Godzilla was in the suit. So I really do like how beefy and burly this this imposter Godzilla is because it really does look like something's hiding in here. Hint, hint. But so also, also John Legrand's uh, paint app, you can also see that he uh, didn't just do straight uh, charcoal charcoal uh, gray. He actually he also did put a little bit of brown in there too on his chest. I really do like that he that he took the time to do that. That makes the figure look comes out a, li a lot. I'm sorry, the figure, the model kit makes it come out a lot more. Makes it pop. That's just not just regular, just charcoal gray like most Godzillas are. Of course, his silver dorsal plates because this Godzilla uh, did have silver dorsal plates. It's like a lot of the earlier seventy, the later seventy movies did, which I really do like that. Um, the those are plays a little bit different than the the seventy four suit, just a tidbit, but nothing outrageous. But again, same here, painted with a with painted uh silver with a little bit of black on the inside of it. It really does look really really accurate to what we got from the movie. And one thing that I do know is a is a bit of a 
not a luxury, but a he took liberties on this is it's the Impostor Godzilla's tail. Because we know Godzilla doesn't have a super long tail in the in the short era in the 70 movies. And I don't think, and honestly, I don't think we saw Impostor Godzilla's tail that often. So I really do like that Burley did have the tail so long because I'm I'm a sucker for long tails as it is. So I really do like that he did take the time to make that tail look a little bit longer. And of course, I know I'll do some size comparisons with some other figures, of, of, of course, obviously. And I'll go ahead and show y'all those in just a moment. Because as you see, again, this thing is incredible by itself. Of course, we got the metal patch as well, showing that showing that this is not Godzilla. It's actually showing that it is Mega Godzilla. And of course, the first size comparison we're going to be doing today is going to be of Angiris. So, of course, y'all know if y'all seen the movie, Angiris seemingly died in this movie. He went through a lot of tough battles in the 70s, honestly. He got jacked up by Gagan, and then he got the brakes beat off him by Impulse Godzilla. But as you see here, uh, the Impulse Godzilla with the X plus 30 centimeter and Gears actually does look very well together, actually. I really do love how these two look together. They look awesome together. And I do love that the Impulse Godzilla is also looking down at him as well. And like I brought up earlier, we do have the little soap patch where it shows the metal that is coming from Imposter Godzilla, showing that he is not Godzilla, that he's actually Mega Godzilla. But the fact that he's looking down and this Angiris is also just the way it is, it makes it even better. And of course, I know I had to do a size comparison with the Monster Makers 28 1975 Godzilla built and painted for me by Mark St. Yang. And of course, these two look awesome together as well. Godzilla's a little bit bigger, but uh, it's more because Impulse Godzilla is looking with his head down. Honestly, if he wasn't looking with his head down, he probably would stand right there toe to toe with him. But again, like I mentioned earlier, this thing, this guy is a little bit beefy, and I really do love that fact that he is a bit beefier than than um, the actual Impulse Godzilla was. Because you can see it a little bit in the movie, but Burley did a really good job showing that in his scope, getting that beefiness in there to make it really look like there's something in there other than Godzilla. But of course, these two look amazing together. Yes, I know this isn't the right Godzilla for this movie, but we'll get a, we'll get the FSO 74 by X, from the Xbox very soon, and those two will probably look great together also. So, for, But for now, this should do. And of course, I know I had to show off the FSO... 1974 Mega Godzilla, and honestly, this is this is what really sprung me to say, you know what? I had the opportunity to get Impostor Godzilla. Let me get him because I already have the FSL Mega Godzilla. And as you see, both of these do look really, really well together. They look incredible, absolutely flawless. As you see here, Mega Godzilla stands toe to toe with Impostor Godzilla, so they they're the exact same height. It's just funny how both of these do size up together, even though Burley did make this kit a little bit bigger. Of course, I know with the FSM Mega Godzilla, the 74, that comes from the Monster Makers 28 kit. You can really tell with the size of it that it, is, it does size up very well with Burley Bang's kit. Both of them look incredible together, and they both look like they're ready to go kill Godzilla. All right, that's all I got for this review, guys. I'll go and give you all my final thoughts right now. Thank you. And we're back. And that's my view on the 1974 Impostor Godzilla. <sighs> beautifully put together and beautifully released by Burley Bang and Steve Sherazoli and built and painted by John Legrand. And like I said, guys, like I can't, I literally haven't been able to stop. I haven't been able to stop looking at this thing since I got it. This thing is just phenomenal. It looks amazing. It's, I mean, y'all saw this guy up close. Like, you can't ask for anything much better than this representation of the Impostor Godzilla, and of course, I know we don't have we don't have that many versions of that of that of this version of Godzilla at all. And I know there was some rumblings about hopefully Burley being able to get get more of these out. Ideally, they have run into a little bit of a snag, but I would definitely say this: if you are interested in this figure, let's do everything we can to be able to help Burley be able to get what he needs to make more of this figure because everybody who's an Impostor Godzilla fan 
needs this in their collection. It's absolutely phenomenal. Perfection. It's perfection for capital P. I absolutely love it. But alright, that's all I've got for this review for y'all today, guys. Of course, as of as from recording this video, we had probably already talked about um, our next show on Monster of Attitude. So our next show on Monster of Attitude is going to be it's called Thirty Two for Thirty, uh, X, uh, X Plus Thirty Centimeter Tournament. So we're going to be judging and picking who we think is the best thirty centimeter X Plus figure of all time. Going with original X Plus scopes, FSL scopes, Sakai scopes, everything is getting thrown into a bucket, and we're gonna figure out who is the what is what is finally the best 32. Th what's the out of the 32? What is the best 30 centimeter figure from X Plus of all time? And that who God, there's a lot of competition, and it's gonna be and also we won't have. We will have a, a, a say in who will win and who won't win. But also, you will as well because we will be voting live on that show May 20th at 7, 7 o'clock Central Time. 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. So please, make sure you're there to vote so y'all can see who y'all's winner will be and who you want to who you want to see be the best 30 centimeter X plus figure of all time. And of course, if you haven't joined us on Kaiju Collectors on Facebook yet, Definitely give us a like there as well. We'll definitely love to have y'all there. Share your collections, share some stories, as well as being able to enjoy everything that's collectibles. And we all and we do try and post the latest news in there as well for, for collectibles coming out. So definitely keep an eye on that Facebook page as well. But alright, guys, I guess that's all I got for y'all today. Y'all have a fantastic night, Kaiji family. Mm -hmm.